it's something that's personally fulfilling. You know, I'm, I'm never actually going to be a boy. I'm never actually going to be a prince. I'm never actually going to be a king. But I can try. I can play one on TV. production of Macbeth and I'm playing Prince Malcolm. And my first role as a boy in Shakespeare was Mercutio in Romeo and Juliet. I was Puck, which is kind of on and off, male, female, doesn't really matter, it's kind of a fairy type thing. So when we ended up doing Shakespeare in my college, you know, I thought I might as well go for it because it might be one of the last opportunities I have to do something like this, which you know, I find it really fulfilling um, because it really does stretch you as a person, and it, I feel I feel it takes a certain kind of personality to take on something like that. Um, I am Dr. Kevin Pierce, and I am currently directing a production of, of Macbeth in um, at Five Towns College. We did some interesting things with the casting of the piece, and uh, after after. Some pretty due consideration. I was looking again and again and again at the role of Malcolm. And in the role of Malcolm, there's a reason why this young prince does not become king at the death of his father. But there's reasons why he's not king. And so, consequently, <laughs> I took that when I was thinking about recasting it, and I was thinking about it originally anyway. And I took that and decided that I think there's reasons why um, people don't want women in power. In working in, in sort of the political systems of some administration that has power, it's very, very interesting to come to find out why people um, tend to give power to women or not give or withhold power from women. And I've had a pretty long go at exploring that. And I, I found a lot of professional courtesy and a lot of empowerment through, you know, through my career. However, I do find there are some reservations. And they may or may not be founded, and it doesn't really matter because the sort of reverberation of, of do we trust women to make decisions when it's crucial, when it's like a war, you know, when there's there's lives involved or money involved for heaven's sake, or or budgets that might be cost. They, there's this little shred of I don't know if we'll let this happen. Whereas the artistic decisions seem to be fairly easy to give. So there's a reason why this young boy doesn't get this. Doesn't get doesn't get to be elected king, and so it's given to Macbeth instead. So I wanted to throw a woman in that role because there's a reason why they hesitate to give this grown woman, who's clearly of age, to take the kingdom. Why they don't give it to her? Now, I started to throw Beth in as a woman figure in Malcolm, and noticed the pretty much all male cast around her not quite able to accept that. So I told Beth, kind of after the first rehearsal or two, I said, Beth, you need to play this like a boy. Get real boy, do a characterization. Like you're a boy, you know, slap him on the shoulder and get tough and ground your feet and really encouraged her to play a male and told all the boys, she's a boy. She's a boy, no question, she's a boy. Malcolm's a boy, we're going to let this really good actress play a boy. And it was interesting how they then all of a sudden responded differently. So for me, <laughs> Dot in the wolf feminist that I am. For me, I'm just sort of, you know, I'm not afraid to tell them I'm playing a trick on them. Because there's no way in the world they'll not know that that, that that's a woman. She is a woman, she's clearly a woman, she's playing a boy, and you can see that, but the issues are splashed in front of you and very, very clear about why not. And you can see her when she, in her feminine mentality, sort of breaks at the lines and can't, like, do the tough things that she needs to do, I see the, the gender issues really, really clearly. And, you know, so, yes. Very nice. <laughs> so so you know your bad. secret's out. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I don't mind, because I think they are out. If they really look at what we're doing, I think it's pretty obvious yeah. what's going on. I guess it would be cross-gender casting, I think. And it's, it's really, it's interesting, because um, a lot of operas today are still even parts for younger males are written for female voices. And um, in, in England, still, a lot, of, a lot of males play female roles as well. For a long time, females weren't allowed on stage, so... 
Um, but it's called um, gender blind. The casting of, of a woman in a, in a male role is called you're being gender blind, as you would be either color blind or racially blind if you cast um, a black father and a white daughter or a black daughter, an Asian daughter, and, a, and another race. And, and you're going, oh, they can't really have that as be their children. And it, in Shakespeare, commonly, that sort of blindness to that so that you give the best actor the role with the qualities, that's that. So we call that it's gender blind. When males are playing females, it's a silly kind of joking type thing, but myself included and all the girls I know that have ever played male roles take it very quite seriously. And it's it's not it's not always easy at first. Um you just you need to be comfortable with it. Or your peers your peers might give you a little a little bit of a hard time, but it's all it's usually all in good fun. Um, as far as far as um, cross casting as, as something having to do with feminism or politics, um, you know, I I guess I could be considered a feminist maybe. But once again, I don't really I don't really know what that means. As far as me personally doing roles like this, it's something that's personally fulfilling. You know, I'm I'm never actually gonna be a boy. I'm never actually gonna be a prince. I'm never actually gonna be a king. But I can try. I can play one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I, I would cast anyone as anything if it if it made sense or if it was the strongest actress. It, it doesn't really make too much difference to me. You know, Hamlet included, I would not be afraid to give a woman a role as long as they had the power to to play it and as long as they have the support and belief of their cast because I don't believe in making a fool out of someone when, when they don't have the support of their cast behind them that believes in what they bring to the role. Casting in the modern day and age as far as gender blindness goes, I just, I hope, I hope that people are making you know, progress towards towards equality. You know, I liken it to coming back to be a little bit political. You know, um, Barack Obama being elected president. You know, everybody made so much of a big deal. Oh, we have an African American president, first time ever. We never thought it would happen. And me personally, I feel like because people are making such a big deal of it, that just goes to show you that. There's not this sense of equality that, that we say we have yet. You know, only when, only when we don't blink twice at it, you know, only when it's not an issue that there's a woman playing a man, or it's not something silly that a man is playing a woman. You know, only then is it really going to be, you know, something that, that you know, I, I hope for. Something that really changed my, my perspective as, as far as um, equality on the bigger scale, as far as mass media, bigger movies, bigger um, movie stars being more aware of, of gender equality especially was Kate Blanchett's portrayal of Bob Dylan. And Cross casting is really, I mean the sort of gender blind issue is, belongs much more in the world of Shakespeare than it does in Shakespeare's stage than it does where we're already into the abstract and we're going, now we're walking around, we're moving this chair, now we're interior, now we're exterior, you get so much more liberty. And that's why I love live theater, although I direct film as well. Um, I, I, there's a future for that, I think, but it's like a pathway almost through the experimental live theater to get to that. I think Kate Blanchett, such, such a theater actress, as well as a, a film actress, that she is able to, to, to make those kinds of switches and people trust her ability to truly transform as a character, which she has a heritage from stage. We are coming to a culture where a film is becoming increasingly more visual, abstract, symbolic, blatantly symbolic, and this whole sort of dark, absurd comedy, you know, um, development of the Coen brothers and those kinds of films that are allowing us to be more, more um, symbolic and more crazy abstract with the things that we're doing in film, I think is paving away for maybe a world like that where we could really explore as Kate Blanchett did. That's the perfect role you mentioned. Mm -hmm.